Hello everyone, welcome back and in this video we're going to be taking up a problem from magnetism. This is related to induced electric fields because of a changing magnetic field topic. So let's read the problem statement. So we have a uniform time varying magnetic field B which is B naught T. So dB by dt is pretty nice in this case so it changes at a constant uniform rate. It's present in a cylindrical region. A fixed wire frame PQR of equilateral triangular shape has slight curve at its corners. Side length of the frame is given and it is made of insulating material. A charge B of charge Q and mass M can move on the wire frame without friction and it is released from rest at the midpoint of PQ over here. It is assumed that bead moves through corners of the frame without any loss of kinetic energy. The bead moves on the frame and again comes to initial position in time T0 with a speed of V0. So we have to calculate the time in which it returns back to the original point and we need to find the speed with which it returns. So try out this problem guys and then check out the solution. Okay, so uh, in this question guys, the magnetic field is given to be into the plane and it is increasing in magnitude. So dB by dt in this question is given to be B0. So now we know that the changing magnetic fields produce an induced electric field. So if I take a loop uh, through which, you know, the magnetic fields are piercing through. So let's mark down the fields here for a second. So, and I say that then the magnetic field changing with time, electric fields will be induced in this loop. So, so let's, I'm going to get rid of these X marks. So in this particular case, the magnetic field is into the plane and it is increasing in magnitude. So the electric fields uh, are going to be induced in the opposite sense, which is something like this. So now we can write the Faraday's law of induced electric field as the circulation the electric field which is essentially the line integral of the electric field so you're doing e dot dl along this closed loop if you perform this this in turn in magnitude comes out to be equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux through the loop so the rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop is pretty easy so the area is constant right so it is going to be pi r squared so i'm assuming the radius of the loop to be r times db by dt which in this case is a b naught and now due to radial symmetry we can take we can assume the e to be constant throughout the loop and i can take it uh, take it out of the line integral the line integral of dl will simply give you the answer as 2 pi r and the induced electric field comes out to be b naught divided by 2 times r so in this particular case so first we have to take an origin somewhere uh, and i guess the best point would be the center of the triangle and let's say at some general instant uh, the particle is somewhere over here and let's call the distance of uh, the particle from the centroid as small r because we know the field in terms of small r right again you can do the same process of you know taking a loop here and doing the integral you'll get the same answer as same answer for the electric field as over here so if you assume a loop something like this of radius r we know that the electric field's direction will be tangential to the circle right or you could say perpendicular to the radial vector so the direction of the electric force is going to be in this direction and the magnitude is going to be q which is a charge of the particle times the electric field which is b naught divided by 2 times r so the electric force is coming out to be a function of this distance r from the centroid of the triangle but the interesting thing in this problem is that we don't care about the vertical component or basically the component of the force perpendicular to the direction of the wire right we only care about the direction along the wire because that's a direction in which which the particle is going to accelerate. The result comes out to be pretty interesting. So if I assume this angle as theta, this will be 90 minus theta and this angle is going to be theta as well. The acceleration of the particle, which we know it is going to accelerate along the frame is coming out to be Q B naught by two. We have to divide it by the mass. So divided by M times R cos theta, right? So we only need the cos theta component. Sine theta will be balanced out by the normal reaction. So and R cos theta, if you observe from this triangle, isn't it's coming out to be a constant, which is basically this distance over here, which we can call it as some small d. And small d is essentially, it's pretty easy to compute. So this distance is L by two. We know this angle is 30. So small d is nothing but L by two tan 30 and L is two root three. So this comes out to be one meters. So after substituting all the values, the value of QB naught by M is given with okay, this R is a mistake. The QB naught by M is root three. R cos theta is d, which is one meter. So the acceleration comes out to be simply root three meters per second square. So now we can simply apply as it is a constant, we can use kinematics. So, and we can say that the displacement is equal to a t squared. Here, keep in mind one thing, guys, don't make the mistakes or mistake of taking s as equal to zero. Physically, yes, the displacement of the particle is zero because it's going and coming back at the same place. Through, If you observe through, throughout the motion of the particle, the velocity vector and the displacement vector is parallel. So this is as good as saying the particle started from over here and and its acceleration is a and it traveled a distance of 3l 
right? Because uh, the side length of the triangle is L. So it traveled L by 2 plus L plus L plus L by 2. So it traveled a distance of 3L. So the displacement is, is going to be 3L in this case. So it is 3 times 2 root 3. And this would be equal to half times the acceleration times T squared. And from here, T comes out to be square root of 24 or 4.9 seconds. Okay. And the velocity is simply going to be A into T by kinematics. And this, if you solve, comes out to be 4.24 meters per second squared. So that was it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.